Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right. So, prayers out to everybody who's going through what they're going through in Gaza. That's where my mind goes first. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you every day. I want to speak of you and whatever I got going on in my life. I think half as bad as what it is that I perceive you going through. And the evils that I'm dealing with in my own world aren't half as wicked as what your children have been facing for the last several weeks. It's horrible, it's real, and I'm not looking away. And because I'm not looking away, I'm a witness. And because I'm a witness, I won't forget. And so that's what I wanna say. There's a lot of people out there who are praying in the name of Allah, a lot of Muslim people were affected by this. Not all of them are Muslim, some are Christians. But, you know, my thoughts this morning is when I look on some of the Muslim posts on IG, a lot of them are saying, bless all of the Muslims. They're excluding other people. And I realize my religion, of course, does the same thing. Bless all the Christians. And my thing is, as I wake up in the morning, I realize that not only are there good others who are affected by that circumstance for which they need their Muslim brothers to pay for them too, or believe in the good in their hearts too, or believe in them not to be discarded of too, but they're also good Christian people and others who have prayers for them. And people who may not pray very much, who have good intentions and thoughts and, 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 and want to send good vibes to them, to not close one's blessings on earth in the presence of humans who don't know but are leading forward in faith you don't know you just believe and you've trusted just like a lot of people who have trusted on the wrong side of this for which they've been led astray they don't know they just trusted and so as I say that I trust in God that's telling me this morning as I'm going through some things that I'm frustrated about in my own personal life, after meditating about this and showering in prayer, I realize I've excluded some people, even though through my words, I haven't. I say I include everybody, I want everybody here. By way of the culture and how I've been led over the years, I know that I've excluded some people. When I say, uh, or when I, when I look to, to fellowship, <laughs> in my own life by way of the agreements of not knowing but just agreements they're just that people look around and say okay them people are this them people are that so we don't mess with them and you hear that enough in your whole life and then you see circumstances where maybe one or two stereotypes might align with why your, your group may feel that way and I just realized that's what the enemy is able to benefit within is the separation of people who are trusting other people but maybe excluding other people within the trust and so I say to you guys I want to undo that I want to unlearn that I'm looking at a bunch of people right now who need to unlearn some things <laughs> who may have been told some things that aren't true who may have been told to stay away from people who meant them well while welcoming people that did not and have backed them into a corner of, 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 of looking as if they don't have any good within them. And that's what I'm seeing in Israel on these TikToks that are popping off all over the place where they're mocking people who they've been told to exclude. And they believe that they should exclude because they trusted the people who told them wrong. And I look in my, my religious sector, Christianity, and I realize we've done that to the LGBTQ community. We're very ferocious about how Jesus doesn't appreciate them and how he will, will strike them down. And I realize that our very own nature is to be evil in different ways, if not their way, a different way. Will he not strike us? You know, we've been told in a lot of cases not to trust white people because we were slaves, black people. You know, we can't trust them. White supremacy and, and all this good stuff, which is true in a lot of cases for which we're seeing. But it's not as simple as looking at the person next to you and saying, I don't trust them. Or looking at something that they may agree upon and say they don't have any good in them. They can't convert to goodness with a little bit of logic or a little bit of 
support in their lives against what it is that otherwise they believe. Sometimes you got to look past what people have in front of them as a blockage, so to speak, a shield that they use, a shield that has been placed upon them by the lies that they've been told or the experiences they've had that they don't know how to bleed through to trust others. You got to look past that shield to say, I can tr convert you to seeing things my way, but not in a way that forces it upon you, but just by example of showing you how I can incorporate somebody else into my circumstance of whom I've been taught I should not. And then together we can, def we can use what it is that we've learned from our various corners to defeat the enemy that we all share. Because it's all the same enemy, man. At the end of the day, we are dealing with the same devil that's trying to destroy us in the same ways, just in different sectors. Sectors, and part of the reason why he's able to effectively do so in certain cases is because we're in different sectors. Instead of coming together, accepting the fact that we've been lied to about why we should separate, and the only reason why any energy would otherwise want us to separate from one another is to be defeated by the enemy for which it serves. Don't blend with them. Don't go over there. Don't support them. If you do that, then what? Then what? The only thing that's really proven to defeat us is that separation. It's the fact that we do see each other as different and then therefore strike against one another or hold resentments in ways that we wouldn't hold against people in our own sectors. It is that separation that ultimately puts us at odds. It is that separation that allows us to have such different points of views that would otherwise make us selfish or callous to other support, callous to other people suffering rather, not providing us support, making fun of them, because we've been taught in various sectors to make fun of them, maybe not to the degree that the Israeli folks have in regards to Palestinians, because I don't have that type of evil in my heart for nobody, from what I'm seeing in them TikToks, I don't have that type of evil in my heart for nobody, but for whatever they've been taught, for whatever it is they've been told is righteous, they're going along with what they've learned, and because they ain't incorporate people like myself who can tell them no that's not how we look at others that's not how i'm treating my oppressors that's not how i'm treating people i've been told are my oppressors that's not how i'm supposed to treat you you know what i mean in these situations they're gonna have be looked at a certain way going forward that doesn't reflect positively upon them and it's going to cause them suffering that is unprecedented for what their conditioning has been that's what you're working against when you incorporate others into your circumstance and allow compassion into your heart i said something yesterday that stuck with me as I was walking away from the camera is that if it doesn't have anything to do with compassion and doesn't have anything to do with unselfishness, it's likely aligned with evil in some way, if not evil all the way. And so if you're not taught that or if you don't see where that math actually aligns with what it is that you're looking at, maybe you are going to move in the opposite direction and then from there we'll have what comes as a blowback to you for engaging in that. And I don't want that for people who follow me. I don't want that for you. What I'm seeing in regards to the Israeli people on TikTok, it's a poor reflection upon everybody. When you see that government killing children and lying about it and gaslighting the world about it, and then you see individual representatives in their civilian life making fun of what it is that's happening, it's like they're all aligned. And I don't believe that because there are good people over there who are not being represented. But if I'm to push them, quote unquote, them away and say they're all the representatives that I see, for which that's what that evil is really about. That's why the ones who are so callous are so loud. That's why the government is being so loud in their actions and evil. It's because they want to reflect poorly upon the good within their own sector because that's what evil is about. Evil is about making everybody look horrible. And then from there, we fight about it. We want to tear down good people. It's the same engagement that they're engaging in when they look at Palestinians and say they deserve their pain. It is the same thing. It's because they've bought into that. Whoever is buying into that. Who otherwise is the ones that are being represented purposefully to be shown as the forefront of what it is that they are. And then I look at the energy, or they are not rather. And then I look at the energy that's been appointed in my people. If the only people you see that look like me are people that want to kill each other, want to rob from you, disrespect themselves as women, disrespect themselves as men, showing off their backside any way they can, only about money, want to push away everybody that don't look like them or what have you, want to bully people that don't, that are don't look like you, all this type of stuff. If that's the only thing you're going to see in me, then of course that's what you're going to believe and you're going to want to destroy me and everybody else that looks like me because you think the world is a better place without that. 
And then you have an entity of people who want to invest in those poor images to make it look like that's the only thing here so they can sit back and watch us all be destroyed. And I think that's the same thing that's happening to the Israeli people right now. The good ones are not being represented. The bad ones are out there representing the good ones in a bad way on purpose to make all of us look at them and say they all horrible humans. And then the evil continues. As evil stands in the forefront louder, even though they are fewer in number, they are louder out in the forefront, poorly representing those who otherwise are not being represented at all, who harbor compassion, who harbor unselfishness, who harbor a prayerful life, who harbor a, an intention of welcoming people in, who harbor the ability to raise children correctly so that they don't engage in that type of sin. That is what's not being represented. That's what's not loud. That is ultimately why we look at them today and say they're all this and think that a lot of us are going to believe that and not, are, are going to feel we're righteous in nature when in actuality we have to look past that and believe through faith that there is good over there so that we can incorporate it over to us and it will be a part of who we are regardless of the fact that they're from over there because it is a battle of good and evil it's not a battle of black and white or my group versus your group or our practices and sin versus your practices and sin for which we can't get with it. You want to convert good to good because that's the strength in the numbers that ultimately you need. An enemy with the few numbers that he has being louder than everybody else has that same strength in the divisive nature of the various different sectors that he's ultimately in, which is all of them. <laughs> But when good comes together, you start to see how few the evil actually is, and you start to push them apart and realize you outnumber them when you come together. And most importantly, as God works, he can convert some of those evil to good by way of the numbers. Because that's all that a lot of evil is going to be is weak and need to feel a part of something. So they're going to come over to good just because that's their nature. Once they realize it ain't as much evil because they're confused by the guise of how loud the few evil actually are. That's how it works. <clears throat> That's how it's always worked. It works like that in every group. And so what I'm telling y'all is this. Now that I come to understand that, I realize that through by way of my own cultures and different things, I have pushed away some good people. Not on purpose, just by the sheepish nature of buying into the lies of what evil tells. I don't want to push away nobody no more. And I want to start the process of disciplining myself against certain practices that otherwise don't welcome good in. And so this morning I realized as I struggled with what it is I was anxious about, I had a, an epiphany that one of the reasons why I've engaged in some of the, the frustrations that I have is because I probably don't know the people that I otherwise would welcome in to have helped me through this be by way of these cultures and by way of these different things that I agreed to that really didn't serve me at all. It's that for which is missing that ultimately provides that void. I don't have enough this, I don't have enough that. That's because you didn't welcome good everywhere you saw it throughout the course of your 39 years of life. And as a result, you're in a space where you not only deserve what comes to people who push good people away and sin in the nature that I did, but you also end up without what it is that they ultimately provide in wisdom, resources, connections, and etc. It's why we all suffer in our own little way because we all find ourselves engaging in this nonsense as a collective unit in this world. And as a result, we just sheepishly find ourselves needing to do evil in order to supplement that because that's the nature of what evil needs is for you to need it. So it's like we were talking about in regards to money. Now I need to go out and do things that go against my energy so that I can get money. And if I don't have what it is that I need in regards to money and I can't get it in some legal way, I got to go out there and hurt somebody in order to get it or go out there and do something evil feed the, the community poison or whatever to get what I need. All of that just comes from a lack of faith and a lot of it we've been coerced into by way of separation into our groups and then from there engaging in what comes from not actually welcoming everybody in who would be good to help supplement what it is we do not have. It's very simple but it's very complicated in nature because at the end of the day that's what evil does. It makes things much more complicated than it has to be. It's your gay friend who would have helped you do that. It's your black fan that would have helped you do that. It's the lesson that you would have learned from your Spanish friend that would have helped you do that. But because you're pushing all these people away, you don't have that wisdom. It's not in your life. 
and the enemy wants that. So you're going to stay in your own little group where everybody thinks alike, where everybody looks alike, where everybody don't trust them over there, where the worst of you steps in the forefront and represents all of y'all. It's like that. that is where we are really going wrong as a human race. And we've always gone wrong with that. And the enemy's been able to dance around in his few numbers, being louder than everybody good, representing everybody good and bad. It needs to stop. It needs to stop. And never have I been more clear on that than waking up this morning frustrated about my own personal problems and then praying deeply about all of those problems and come to this very conclusion. And I didn't have what I need because I pushed away the people who had it. I didn't have the wisdom I needed to feel better about my circumstances or to welcome better practices into my life because I was pushing away the people who would have taught me those. I was pushing away the people that otherwise could have gave me the encouragement that it made me feel better about a morning like this. They weren't in my life. And maybe that wasn't my fault because I agreed to some things that were ultimately agreed upon around me throughout the course of my life growing up. But now I need those things. And because I'm smart enough at this point and prayerful enough at this point to have fathom that, I need to give it to you. A lot of the compassionate people that we could have been best friends with, we could have gotten the most fruit from, we could have learned the best trades from, we could have learned how to manage this or that. Those people are the very people we've pushed away, taken everything from, or otherwise whatever your group did to them. Whether you pushed them away, or pillaged from them, or bombed their kids, or, or depraved them of what it is that they ultimately needed, or pillaged from their land from over there instead of enriching them with what otherwise make them their best from within your resources, you could have brought about greater them, but didn't have that in your group because of everything that we've already talked about in regards to sin pushing people away agreeing over here while everybody else is that over there and we don't mess with them it's what you had that could have made them better that could ultimately f bounce back to you for which would have made you better we all try to keep it together but what we really need to do is get together so that we can all be each other's crutch against the common enemy that has infiltrated each and every one of us So that's my thought this morning, man. I didn't want to come over here and vent about the specifics of my problems because they don't hold any weight. This is what holds the most weight when I really consider it. It's that I need to be more considerate and that I need to teach y'all what it is that I've learned in that regard. Stop pushing people away just because you were told by way of what it is that's in your group that they are evil because of what it is that they do when you know your own secrets and the evil that you engage in. God ain't happy with you either. Stop that. Understand that whoever told you that was engaging in evil that was tossed passed to them by people who were engaged in evil that wanted to preserve the evil that ultimately is in all of these groups. Get it out of your life. Get it out of your heart and get it out of your life. Because all it's meant to do is to deteriorate what it is that ultimately you are and your image simultaneously. No different than what we're seeing the Israeli government do to the Palestinians right now. Not only do they want to destroy these people, but they want to terrorize them. Same application of truth. It is evil. Same application of truth. It ain't enough to destroy you. It has to make you fearful. It ain't enough to destroy you. It has to have you make it so that you're not sleeping well at night. It ain't enough to destroy you. It has to intricately try to put in place various different applications of terror so that you will not only feel the wrath of what they're going through, but also ultimately be destroyed by it all the way down. They don't want to just eradicate the Palestinians. They're trying to take from them their will and kill. And if their life is the only thing they can lose, then why is it that they're trying to take so much more from them than their lives? Because it's a spiritual, and they understand that. The evil understands it's a spiritual. You may think it's all over when your life is lost, but understand what you're seeing by the application of what they're doing to those people, that they're trying to take more from them people than their lives. They're trying to take their ability to be happy. They're trying to take away their will to believe in the God that they pray to all day long. When they say Allah, Akbar, whatever the words are, respectfully, that's what they're trying to take from those people. The will to agree that there's a God for which they can't break in their spirit because that's in them. And if they weren't so caught up in their own evil, they would realize that they need to engage in that same thing to overcome what's coming their way next. While they're trying to take that from them, they don't realize it's the very essence of what it is that they need to have in their own hearts. Are you strong enough to go through what it is that you're putting them through? Or have you forgotten you already have? That's what I say to the Israelis who are engaging in that nonsense.
You are teaching me something by way of the actions and the applications of the evil that you're doing to those people. You are showing me yet again another application of the same thing that evil always engages in. It's the same stuff. Like I always tell y'all, evil is not a creative. It's going to continue to do the same thing over and over again in different ways. You just got to be smart enough to understand its same little algorithm. It's going to apply it a different way, but it's going to be the same damn application. Try to break your will and have you destroyed by way of their strikes. But at the end of the day, so long as you believe in a God greater than yourself, then that God will bring you your wisdom, bring you the understanding that they are fewer in nature that are evil. And that there are some friends over there for you. You just got to be able to get to them. And you can't get to them by thinking everybody's not a friend. The evil that has a hold of a lot of us needs to be let go of by way of first us trying to work on what's in the mirror asking the God that you serve or the inner spirit that you have to get the evil out of your own heart so that you can open your mind to the wisdom that will ultimately let good in then from there you can start seeing the various different concepts and understandings that come from that but you gotta have that first or otherwise your eyes are gonna be closed to all good you ain't gonna know what good is. You're gonna let other people who are evil define evil for you, and they're gonna tell you that good is evil, and then from there, from there, you start believing the nonsense. It starts with you, and it begins with a decision to not let evil continue in your own heart. And a lot of us are gonna listen to somebody else next to us tell us the opposite. And we're going to agree with that because that's what evil does. It's very convincing. But remember, it's fewer in number than the good. There is more good than evil. There is more compassion than not compassion. You can see that in animals. We are inherently compassionate. It takes a certain level of application of evil that would otherwise turn us that. In very most cases. Most. Some people are born bad, but not many. Very few. <laughs> Which is why this is so horrible seeing them kill so many children. compassionate entities that have to otherwise be taught to separate from one another I've seen that in my own life by way of who was around me when I was first coming into the world it was everybody I was born in a melting pot in Los Angeles so I know that you can put kids together with one another and they ain't gonna have any more problem than any others you don't have to stay in your sector where everybody looks like you and if you do you have to know what it is I'm telling you is true The only groups we should really be a part of is good versus evil. Who then needs to otherwise convert to good to not lose. That is the truth. And it starts with you. BL44, I thank you all for watching.